If you want to create your own custom chatbot within minutes that you can deploy to your website, WhatsApp, Instagram, or many more, then this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily create your chatbot using a tool called Chatbase that you can give custom knowledge to, so you can answer your questions and that you can deploy as an AI agent. All of that within 20 minutes, no coding required. So let's get started. So here we are at the Chatbase website. Again, it's a very easy to use no code local tool that allows you to create customized chatbots, for example, a support chatbot for your online shop or a WhatsApp chatbot that talks to potential clients. And not only does it enable you to create these chatbots within minutes, but you can also deploy them as AI agents. So not only can it answer questions for you, but it can also perform tasks like booking an appointment or sending emails or sending an invoice or sending you a payment link, for example. So here with Chatbase, you can also add these custom functions to your chatbot as well. By the way, link to this website is in the video description down below. And the first thing we need to do is click on this button over here to create our AI chatbot. And after you created your account, you would have access to this dashboard. And the first thing we need to do is we would need to train our AI chatbot on some custom knowledge. So we can use that knowledge in order to answer certain questions that we want to. So there's multiple ways you can do this. You can either use a file, text file, a PDF file in this case, or you can write your own text over here. You can also specify a website that you might have and it can actually crawl that website, extract all of the information that it can find and use that in order to have a knowledge that it can then use in order to answer questions as well. You can also add your uh, specific questions that you want to your AI agent to be able to answer. So some common Q and A's and uh, you can also write a specific answer that this AI agent always will give if encounter a similar question. Uh, what you can also do is you can also import some files from Notion, which is a very popular text file editor. But in my case, I'm going to use a file. So here's the file that I'm going to use. So I want to create a support chatbot for a hypothetical doctor's clinic um, for eye medicine. So this is the knowledge that I want to provide to my agent. So here are information about the facility, uh, all the treatments that are provided. So the chatbot can answer questions about that. So I can go back to chat base and then I can click on this area over here and I can select the file that I want to use. Now it's uploaded Then I can simply select it here and then I can click on create agent. Now it's actually already done and now I can go ahead and test this out by asking some questions. When are your opening hours? And as you can see, it already works. Or I can also ask, what treatments do you provide? Okay, everything already works. And there are a couple of things here we can actually uh, customize. Uh, first of all, we can change the model that we use. So the model is basically the brain of the AI agent and there's a multitude of different models you can choose from. Here you can see you can even choose from different providers like OpenAI with all the GPTs, as well as from Anthropic with Cloud, as well as from Google with Gemini and so on and so forth. And they differ a little bit in terms of their smartness, also in terms of how fast they respond, as well as, which is probably the most important thing, their costs. For example, the standard model GPT-40 Mini have a credit cost of one, which is the cheapest one. And in most cases, this is already enough. You can look up uh, in the documentation how much this translates into your local currency. Uh, but again, this is probably already enough for most people. And if you're not satisfied with how your AI agent or AI chatbot actually answers to your questions, you can also play around with other models and see if you like that more. You can actually use a, a built-in tool for that. Here you can click on compare to do that. And here you will get the option to add an agent. And here now you have two chats uh, open and here you can choose another model. For example, I can choose O3. And then I can ask a question, for example, what, what treatments do you provide? And now both uh, chatbots are gonna answer. As you can see here, this one's a little bit faster than this one, but you can argue that this answer is actually much more comprehensive. So you can play around with this. You can compare two different chatbots and see which model you like more. And based on that, you can then make your decision which model you want to choose. The next thing we can configure is the temperature, which is basically an expression how random the AI should respond to you. 
and uh, the higher this value, the more creative or more random the answers become. So if you want the AI agent to have very creative answers or make a lot of jokes, then I would recommend you to put this a little bit higher. But if not, then I would just keep it at zero so the answers and the behavior get more deterministic. And the next thing we can configure is the system prompt, which is probably one of the most important things here, which is basically an instruction or an, um, yeah, an instruction how the AI agent should operate. And there's actually a couple of templates that, can, that you can select from. Here, for example, I want my AI agent to be a support agent, so I'm going to select customer support. And if you want to change anything up or if you want some, things, uh, some special rules for your AI agent, then you can simply add it here by just describing what you want. Uh, there's actually a better way to look at this here, the settings tab, and then you can click on AI. And here it's a little bit bigger, so you can it's easier for you to uh, change it up if you want to. All right, so the next thing we can look at is actually the chat interface, which is also at the settings here. So here you can change the look of your AI agent. You can also change the first message of the AI chatbot. Here I can change this to uh, welcome to the office of Dr. Nguyen. This is the first thing the chatbot would say. And then you can also change the display name. So here's uh, just the name of the file that I use. So I want to change that to uh, docbot. And then here you can click on the style tab to change the appearance. You can switch between light and dark mode. I'm going to keep it at light mode here. You can also add a profile picture to your chatbot. So you can click on upload here. And then you can select an image. You can make this a little bit bigger so everything's in the image. As you can see now, I have this icon over here. I can also change this icon over here. So let me choose the same picture. We can also change the color of this chat bubble over here to let's say turquoise like that. And we can also change the bubble over here. So let's make this white or like grayish. And you can play around with this as you want. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add some actions to our AI chatbot, which would make it a uh, AI agent because then it's able to perform some tasks for us. And for that, we can click on this action tab over here, and then we can look at some integrations that are already uh, that come already out of the box with Chatbase. So there are a couple here already. So you can add it to, or you can perform some actions with Slack. You can also use Stripe for payments. You can also use Calendly for uh, booking appointments as well, and some other things as well like Zendesk and Sunshine. In my case, I want the ability to book an appointment through the chatbot. So I'm going to add Calendly to this. Uh, but you would have to already have your account set up with Calendly. So if you don't have one, you would have to create one first. And then you can connect it by this button over here. I'm going to quickly add my account. Now my account is connected, so I can create an action on this. So I can click on available actions over here and then I click on create action. And then I can select Calendly down here, get slots. Now we have to give this action a name, so we can call this show available appointments. And then we have to select an event type. So you probably have your own event already created here. So I'm just going to use my standard one here. So the event is basically just uh, something that you can add to your calendar, like an appointment in this case. And then we can already save this down here. And then we can already try this out. So I can ask, uh, do you have any free appointments for tomorrow? So as you can see, it already worked. So he was able to select only the day that I actually want to, which is tomorrow, the 5th of August. And I can click on here and I can see the available slots and then I can click on the slot that I want and I can book an appointment immediately. If you want this to work in production as well, you will have to click this button over here as well. All right, so now it's enabled. And let me show you how to add another action, which might be very useful for most people. So we can click on available actions again, and then we can create a new action again here. And this time I want to add a custom button. 
And here's where I want to create a button that can navigate the user to a certain page they might be looking for. So in my case, for example, if the user is asking for the specific information about the doctor, like the portfolio or the career or something like that, I can show this in the chatbot and it will automatically be able to navigate the user to the page that shows that information that he's looking for. So um, let's say we can call this or we can give this a name again. We can call this navigate to doctor like doctor page and then we can have to give this a description so the AI knows when to use this tool so we can say um, use this when the user is asking about information about the doctor Okay, and then we can give this a link where it should actually um, navigate the user to. So here I have my web page or my website about this hypothetical um, clinic. And here's the page I want to navigate to. So here's the about section about the doctor and here's where I want to navigate to. So I can simply copy this link and then I can go back here and then I can paste it in here the URL where this button should navigate me to, and then I can save this. And then I can try this out again. So I can ask, um, can you give me more information about the doctor? So as you can see here, it already showed me this link. I can click on this button. And there you go, it opens me the website that I wanted to navigate the user to. Something like this is probably really valuable if you have an online shop because you might have a lot of different tabs for the user, like for the orders or the invoices or for tracking the parcel or something like that. And if they specifically ask for that, you can easily navigate them to the right tab so they can easily find that. So now we are actually already ready to deploy our AI chatbot to our website. Uh, before that, I actually also have to enable this tool here so we can use that. And, and for the deployment, we can click here on deploy and then we can click on embed and then we can make this public. And there are two things we can select here now. We can either show this as a bubble like down here or we can embed this as a keyframe. I'm gonna choose the bubble. And for this, you can now just simply copy this code over here. And then you can go to your website code and with any website, normally you would have this index.html file here. And here's where I can simply paste my code like that. I can save it and then I can go back to the website. So then I would have this bubble down here and I can start a conversation. And I can ask something like, uh, do you have free appointments on Thursday? And now you can see it shows me all of the free appointments or it shows me the calendar for Thursday. I can click on here and I can then select my slot. Or I can also ask, can you give me more info about the doctor? Now it shows me the link and I can open it. And there you go, it already works. So if you want to deploy this to anything else like WhatsApp or Instagram, you can click here on deploy again and then you can click on integrations. And here's where you can see of the apps that you have access to. And not only do you have WhatsApp and Instagram, but you also have Messenger, for example, also WordPress and Slack or Zapier even. And it's also coming to Shopify actually. So let's say you have an online shop that you created with Shopify. You can then easily automate your customer support with a chatbot like this. That's probably going to be very valuable for a lot of people. And if you want to now deploy it to any of these apps, you can simply click on connect here and then you can simply follow the steps that are displayed there and it's actually very easy to do. Another thing we can look at is the analytics tab over here. For example, we can click on chats. Let me close this actually. And here's where you can see when some chats were, some chats happened and also where the user were from that actually used your chatbot. So that might be very helpful to you. Here you can also see the topics of what they were talking about. So let's say you already have a lot of data in here, you will be able to see what the general topics and themes were that were discussed in the chatbot. 
as well as a sentiment analysis. So you can also see how many of your chats were either neutral, positive, or unspecified. So uh, let's say a lot of people were very unhappy with your customer support, and then you can see it over here. And then you might be able to identify what the problem was and then tweak your chatbot so it works better for people. So there's one more thing I want to show you, which is let's say you run into the issue where your chatbot is not able to answer a question of a user and therefore the user wants to talk to an actual person because the chatbot simply cannot resolve the issue, then you would need to pass that question actually to an, a real person, which you can actually do with another action, which we can add here again. So we can click on action here and then we click on available actions again. And over here, you can click on create actions and then we can select uh, collect leads. And this action allows you to create a form which the user can then fill out with some information that can then be saved in the backend, which then can be used in order for an actual person to get back to the user. For example, they can fill out their email address or their phone number or something like that. And the fields for this form can be uh, configured here in the fields tab. For example, we can enable the name of the user as well as the email address. We can save this here. And here's actually a uh, standard description when to use this tool or this action. I want to delete this because I only want to use this when the user actually asks for an actual person. So we can say execute this when the user is asking for an actual person to talk to. Then we can save this. And here at this form tab, we can actually see how this form would look like. As you can see, here's the name, here's the email address, and then you can click on submit to submit this data to the back end. And then we can also try this, or actually we have to um, configure some messages when the user submitted it. So we can say, uh, thank you, um, a, an employee will get back to you as soon as possible. Or let's say the user closed this form. We can, we'd also have to add a dismiss message here. So let's say we can just uh, add like you closed the form and then we can save that again and then we can click here on live again to try this out we can say um, hi um, I got a notice from the doctor but I think they mix it up with someone else's. And then I can ask for um, an actual person. Can I talk to an actual person? And now you can see it displays this form. I can say my name is David. And here's my email address, submit this. And now we can have this, or now we have the success message here. And now this already works, we can enable this. Then we can, or let me actually open my website again, over here. This should now already work. So let's say I try this out again. So again, David Yuen at gmail.com. Submit this and if we go back to chat base now and then we can click on analytics or not analytics but activity and then leads. So you can see now here I submitted two times my, uh, my information and then I can click here on export to get that data and some employee later can simply use this data now to get back to me. 
So I hope you liked this one. Normally my content is more focused towards development, but with this I wanted to show you that you don't have to be a wizard in order to use AI effectively. And as always, if you're a business and you need some professional AI development help, you can get in touch with me through the contact information in the description down below. And if there's anything you want to see in a future video, just leave a comment. On that note, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.